Hello everyone and welcome back to the Female Fight Fans podcast. My name is Erin McCall. I'm your host and the founder and CEO of FemaleFightFans.com. Welcome back. Thanks so much for tuning in and supporting the show. Make sure to leave a rating and review on iTunes if you like the content and also just to tell me uh, the things that you like and don't like because we're always looking for feedback. So today's going to be another mini sode that I'm going to be doing solo, also based on an article on the website, which I will link in the show notes for you to read. Um, essentially, I'm trying out this format where I do expanded podcast episodes that are based on articles published on the site by myself. And essentially, I just expand more into them in a podcast format and also just kind of deliver the content for you in a different way with the same theme, just audio versus an article. So tell me also if you like this format and this idea. I think having different mediums like this as a content consumer is always really great. I know some people who do similar kinds of formats and I always think it's really interesting to see the differences. Um, but tell me what uh, <laughs> you think of me doing this. Also, it is, I seem to have a knack for recording these podcasts super late at night. Um, <laughs> talk about multitasking right now. I'm wearing a face mask. Um, I'm having some coffee at 1230 a.m., which is probably a bad idea, but I digress and recording this podcast for you. I had a really, really bad headache like all day today. So I was just basically in bed the whole day. And then I got sort of a second wind around 11 and I took a walk. I got some groceries. I made the little salad that I had for like a late night snack or dinner. And now I'm doing this. So there you go. Just to set the scene a little bit. So um, the topic of this episode and the title is eight reasons to train martial arts no matter who you are. And I think that it's important to talk about training as much as it is to talk about actual professional fighting. And it's definitely different. But I find that a lot of people fall into either the category of a fan or a spectator or they train themselves. And there's not necessarily that much crossover Um, I know quite a few fighters who actually don't really watch other fights other than for research or for tape study or things like that. And a lot of fans of mixed martial arts or even not mixed martial arts, but martial arts on their own or um, boxing or jujitsu or what have you, don't necessarily practice these things themselves. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity and room for growth in practicing and I would encourage everyone to to train and to try it and you don't have to train seriously under a sensei or something like that but just taking classes or um, even learning from like YouTube you know, there's so many different ways that you can train and you can integrate martial arts into your life into your fitness routine and it's incredibly rewarding in so many ways because it not only gives you a lot of physical strength and um, helps to do things like increase your level of cardio, your endurance, but it also gives you an incredible amount of confidence. And it gives you this ability also to protect and defend yourself. And having that kind of knowledge and information is not only incredibly useful, but it gives you a sense of inner confidence that you project out into the world and knowing what to do in a bad situation and being prepared for any kind of situation that might come your way or that might arise allows you to just have a sense of ease in your everyday life because you don't need to worry about what ifs because you're going to be ready for that. Um, and you're going to be able to avoid conflicts and stop conflicts from even happening before they start because you can diffuse them. Um, so it's something really, really good for you. I almost think of martial arts as like 
yoga or meditation or any of those kinds of practices, wellness practices that are very good for um, human beings in general and really give you a higher level of connection to your body, um, to your mind, um, and to your spirit. And I think every single person on this planet can benefit from doing it. Um, so, uh, let's go into the eight reasons I've outlined for you to train in case that wasn't enough. So, um, the first reason is that you'll gain muscle tone and confidence, which we kind of just talked about a little bit, but you're going to get stronger from practicing martial arts, period. And a lot of that strength has to do with the mental aspect because martial arts is so much more mentally based than physically. And that's because you have to push past your own internal limitations. <clears throat> because like when you're, all right, like for example, um, if you're running on a treadmill and you get tired, um, right? And even if you're incredibly in shape, you know, after a few minutes, if you're going at a very rigorous pace, you're probably going to start to fatigue and your muscles are going to start to just feel tired and you're going to start sweating and your heart rate's going to increase and all those things. And your body's going to be telling you that, um, or I'm sorry, I should say your mind is going to be telling you that you're tired and that you should stop And that this is painful, right? Like this is not a pleasant experience. Um, Or even not even just that, but that you can't do it. Like you need to stop because you're not able to continue. Or like this is uncomfortable. So you need to do whatever it takes to stop yourself from doing it anymore. (laughs) Right? And um, you'll never get anywhere with martial arts training if you don't have the ability to push past your limits and phys- and you also learn how these limits that you think are physical cuz when you're running and you're getting fatigued like that example i just used a lot of times we think it's our body that is telling us this but what you'll learn is that it's actually your mind it's actually your thoughts that are giving you this false perception of what you're capable of And that you can actually learn how to shut off that voice inside of your mind and keep going. So even when you're tired, even when you're beaten down, even potentially when you're bleeding, right, you can keep going. And you're the one who's in control and not in not your mind. And a lot of it is that mental training of overcoming your mental limitations. Um second reason is true empowerment and empowerment is kind of a buzzword right now although it's a buzzword that I really particularly like but um, I think the core of it is taking control of your life of your body Um, it's all about not being a victim and instead being in the driver's seat and accepting that you're the one creating the circumstances and not taking the easy way out of just blaming other people. And the reason that martial arts is so empowering is because it's really you at the center because nobody can do this stuff for you. Like there's so many things in life where you can have a leg up or you can have advantages or you can have disadvantages um, that make things either a lot easier for some people to obtain or a lot more difficult for others. And martial arts, certainly there are certain things that might come more easily to some people than others, but you're the only one who can do the work. Like there is no kind of easy path with it because even if you have every physical and material advantage available to you, you still have to put in the work because nobody can train for you. Um, nobody can condition for you, Um, nobody can spar or punch or kick for you, no one can monitor your, or they can monitor, but nobody can eat for you, right, like, you have to do all these things, you can have the best coaches and training partners in the world, but if you're not actually doing the work, you're not going to be able to perform or learn, and a lot of that's even, um, just 
within your own self. Like if you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to perform to the level you need to. So even if you're capable of all of these things, if you don't believe you can do it and actually do it, then it doesn't matter how good of coaching or training you have access to because you're not doing it. It's kind of like, you know, like if you can afford the best chef and the best, you know, food and nutrition and restaurants in the world, right? Or personal trainers, all of that. If you can afford the best, but you don't actually do it, you don't actually eat the food that they make, you don't eat healthy, you don't exercise, if you don't actually do those things, um, you're not going to see the results. It doesn't matter. And no one can actually do it for you. They can certainly help you. They can certainly push you, right? But you have to be the one who actually shows up. Third reason is a lot more lighthearted, which is that it's kind of fun. Um, And by kind of fun, I mean really fun. Listen, martial arts is supposed to be fun. Learning the art of combat is fucking amazing. It's freeing. It's playful. It's also very gritty and raw. It's messy and sweaty. But it's also a very joyful and heart-centered practice. And there's just so much positivity that you can take out of training and I guarantee you're gonna come away from it so glad that you did it for a myriad of reasons and having fun is important fourth reason is uh, mindfulness which now I'm sure when you think about meditation um, you probably don't associate that with martial arts right Um, but they have a lot more in common than you might assume. Um, because meditation and mindfulness are all about being in the present moment and, um, not allowing your thoughts or your anxieties or worries, um, to control you. Um, it's not necessarily about blocking those things out, but it's like, just allowing them to pass and being an observer instead of getting sucked into them. Um, and man, especially if you're sparring or things like that, you have to be in the present moment and martial arts, like, you know, it's, there's some devastating consequences if, if, if you don't do that, because you have, you have to be present. You can't be thinking about what you're going to have for dinner or, the text message that you sent your boyfriend yesterday that he didn't respond to or making a mental to-do list. If if you're doing that, you know, you'll get clipped with an ax kick or um, you'll get taken down with a head and arm throw um, or you'll just get punched straight in the nose, right? Like you actually pay a price for failing to be fully present and you have to be totally focused on what's in front of you. You can't be thinking about other things. And I think in a lot of other forms of fitness, um, you can still be sort of mentally preoccupied. And this really forces you to be mindful and to just be fully present and shut out every other distraction possible. And I think for a lot of people, having that extra motivation of potentially getting hurt if if you're not paying attention, I think that that really helps because, um, you know, I think that that's going to really make you focus and um, stay in it instead of just quitting, right? <laughs> um, fifth reason is a love of life um, that can kind of be found through the practice. And this is a little bit more specific, I think, for people who maybe have survived trauma or experienced depression or mental illness. Um, but martial arts forces you to really dig deep and find those motivations for making life worth living. Because, um, when you're having to fight, when you're actually having to battle, um, you know, for your place in the world or your resources or your safety, it forces you to stand up for yourself and, it also just puts things into perspective because we constantly take things for granted every day, every second of the day. We complain, we bitch and moan, you know, we wonder why we don't have 
um, a new car or how we could have been passed up for that promotion or why our mom calls us 10 times a day. Um, you know, we numb out, we drink, we binge watch TV, we procrastinate, right? Like we're constantly, even if we have opportunities, we're delaying them. And martial arts really forces you to face the reality that, you know, listen, your life is, is very temporary. Your time on planet earth is very short and it can also really easily be taken away. You know, we're not immortal creatures. And I think sometimes, not even necessarily that we think that, but we're just so focused and caught up in all the bullshit of day-to-day life that we forget how short life really is and even how meaningless it is in the sense of the things that we spend so much time and effort thinking about don't really mean anything. You know, like the text message that you're so worried about and psychoanalyzing probably in the grand scheme of your life really isn't going to matter. And um, being passed up for a promotion at a job you don't really like that much anyway, probably, again, not going to make it to the highlight reels, (laughs) right? Um, And sometimes we just forget that, like, things are not going to be here forever and we're not going to be here forever. And you're constantly kind of faced with that reality of, oh, someone can hurt me or I um, can be injured or my safety can be compromised through martial arts practice. And it really just forces you to be grounded and, and, and appreciate what you have because just being able to get out of bed in the morning without aches and pains um, is a blessing, right? And having food on the table and um, having a job to go to and all those things, but constantly we're looking for more or searching for ways to, um, just numb ourselves of all of our feelings and trying to escape. Reason six is, um, learning about yourself because you're going to learn a heck of a lot about yourself, um, and doing any kind of training. Um, if you really, really want to learn about who you are, sign up for a class, uh, punch a heavy bag, do a mint work session because you're going to see who you really are, what you're made of very, very quickly in the process. Um, probably more quickly than you would imagine, to be honest. And cause you're going to be tested your limits and your comfort and your boundaries are going to be pushed and the more you confront that, the more you're going to have to even see, like, okay, who am I? What am I made of? And what am I capable of? And, you know, you'll also kind of learn even about, um, you know, how do you tend to face challenges? Because how you do one thing is how you do everything. So how you approach things in martial arts is probably how you approach things in life. So, for you know, are you the kind of person who cuts corners to get by? Um or do you take the hard lessons and do you refuse to let anything be easy? Like you'll see that through um, doing any kind of training. And, you know, because are you going to take the easy way out or, um, you know, and stand in a spot where the teacher can't correct you? Or, um, you know, are you going to go so hard on the heavy bag that you can barely breathe after class? But like in a negative way where you pushed yourself too hard. Um, do you tend to quit when you're faced with adversity and you endure all the way till the final bell? Like you'll learn those things. And by the way, those things can be changed too. It's not meant to be like how you face challenges. If it's not maybe what you would like the answer to be, it's not like that's something that's fixed. You know, you can change that, but it's just meant to show you what you're actually, um, how you're actually approaching life and forcing you to be honest with yourself. Um, reason number seven is community. There's really no better way to find community than martial arts because it's, it, it's built around support. Any of the practices are really built around learning from other people. And, you know, in the right environment, your training partners, your teachers and coaches are going to be your guides and your mentors. And you're all really there to help each other in this common purpose. And, um, you know, it's, it's really special and it's really cool to be able to, 
um, work with other people and help them and help and have them help you. And, um, it's something kind of like no other. And it's sort of like a spiritual journey that you go on together, as cheesy as that sounds. And reason number eight, our final reason, is self-defense training. Um, which self-defense, um, I think is a really basic skill that everyone should be armed with. I think in schools, they should be teaching everyone how to defend themselves and really prepare people, especially young people, with this kind of knowledge. But sadly, that is not yet the case. And most people walk around not knowing how to defend themselves or how to find safety if they're ever confronted with a dangerous situation. But the good news is that you can change that. And you can be part of a new normal where everyone has the knowledge of how to protect themselves and how to keep themselves safe and to stop conflict before it starts. Um, And I think that especially, you know, I think everyone, but especially if you're a woman and um, especially if you live alone or, um, you know, you live in a bad neighborhood Like, the more sort of at risk you are for being harmed, I think the more important it is that you know how to defend yourself. But it's just such a good skill to have, and it changes the way that you approach life in the world because you're not going to walk down or walk around with your head down and, um, you know, slumped over. You know, you're going to be confident. And, um, you know, people pick up on those things, people pick up on the energy that you exude. And, if if you look confident and assured, you know, you're not, you're making yourself not a target for people that are trying to do harm to others and criminals and all those kind of things, because they, they're not looking for someone who's going to fight back and give them a hard time. They're looking for someone who is vulnerable and scared and shy, right? So I'll leave you with this final line. It's not about what you train. It's about how you apply it. Um, it's not about what martial art you pick. It's not about if you do Kung Fu or Jiu Jitsu or boxing or Muay Thai. It doesn't matter. It's not about that. Train whatever you want, whatever sounds interesting, whatever you feel called to do that. Um, because that's, it doesn't matter. It's all about the application. So thank you all once again for tuning in. Make sure to leave a five-star review on iTunes and subscribe to the show. Um, And make sure to tell me what kind of things you want to see. If you like one of the guest interviews, if you like one-off shows like this, I would love to know. And uh, until next time, see you later. Or hear you later.